What's up guys, Ryan here. So excited for you to watch this video. Today we're gonna to break down the Top Gun 2 trailer. I'm gonna use my experience as a combat fighter pilot and a Thunderbird pilot to just let you know what I'm seeing, give you some insight into whether it's realistic or not, and just enjoy, it's Top Gun. So if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and boom, dominate that like button for me. That'll help get more Top Gun into people's lives. And every time a like button isn't pressed during this video, a fighter pilot's soul dies. <laughs> I don't know. If you wouldn't mind, it would help me out a ton and it would just help me grow this channel. So with that said, let's dive in. All right, I love how they have at the very beginning an aileron roll. An aileron roll is near and dear to my heart because on almost every single mission I've ever flown, I've done an aileron roll. And the reason why is because this is the coolest job in the world. And if you're not having fun, then something's wrong. So I would always make it a point to just have fun on every mission, whether it was at the very beginning or the very end, I would find a space where it was allowed and I would just rock out a sweet aileron roll because it's fun. All right, cool mountain scene there with the F-14 Tomcat flying in. So the US Navy no longer has any F-14 Tomcats. They were the jet that had the swept wings. So if it was going really fast, low level, the wings would be swept. And then if it was maneuvering, coming into land or just flying slow, the wings would move to a more forward position. And I'm, I'm assuming that was just kind of uh, expensive for the Navy to maintain. Uh, however, I've heard that Iran has gotten their hands on some of these. <laughs> I think we sold them some back in the day. Uh, so there could be another dogfight involving an F-14. Um, they just wouldn't be on the winning side. Hopefully. Your instructor is one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced. Okay, that is kind of like a descending barrel roll is what I would call that. And that's just a fun maneuver to do. So sometimes I would use that to get on the other side of another airplane. So if this was me and this was another airplane, I would just roll over top of them and you usually wind up somewhere below them, but then you just kind of roll back out and you're just on the other side of the formation. So super fun way to make that happen. Yeah. All right, so usually you wouldn't get in a big auditorium like that with a whole bunch of other pilots, except rarely, and there usually wouldn't be jets in there because they'd be getting worked on or they'd be out flying other missions or something like that. Uh, but his advice is actually pretty sound, so when you're learning from someone, really that's what they're teaching you. They're teaching you to stay alive and how to protect your wingman up there, so good advice. All right, I love that because it kind of goes back to Top Gun 1. If you've seen it, uh, Maverick basically says, I threw on the brakes and he'll fly right by. So he's just essentially trying to get behind another aircraft that's trying to shoot him down. Now, in my opinion, what I would do instead of that, something a little more realistic that the jet could actually do, is I would maybe do a split S down and try to get this jet to lose sight of me. And a lot of times with different adversary jets, they can't see really well kind of to the sides and behind them. So the more you can get in that position, kind of behind them or to the sides, the better. And the lower you get, you can kind of conceal yourself with ground cover. So that's the technique I would use. That one, it's a little too close because I think if you slammed on the brakes like that, um, you know, the jet's gonna be far enough behind you most likely that it's not really gonna do anything, but definitely looks cool for the movies. Your reputation precedes you. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting an invitation back. They're called orders, Maverick. <laughs> All right, they're called orders. So he's coming back to one of the most elite training schools in the world. Uh, I think a lot of these instructors, you know, I'm not a Top Gun instructor, but I think a lot of these instructors would probably tell you that going back and teaching is just an honor. And so a lot of times what I thought about as an instructor in the Air Force was I'm trying to create more of me, trying to replicate my skills and other people because I know that I'm not gonna be around flying fighter jets forever. I'm gonna go do different things. So being able to pass that on to someone is, it's an honor. And I think a lot of instructors would probably say that so they wouldn't necessarily need to be ordered back to the school but all right so dog fighting is usually one versus one two versus one it's called acm air combat maneuvers and usually just on a side note if you're talking to somebody up in the up in the air the wind rush in the in the cockpit is so strong that you're not gonna be able to hear anything unless that mask is tied up and tight but this looks way cooler for sure 
Uh, and then he'd blast up right through the middle of two aircraft. Probably unlikely to happen. I mean, you would probably know well beforehand that there's a jet that's going to do that. You would have picked him up on radar before or you would have had like an AWACS or someone tell you there's another aircraft out there. So most likely you wouldn't get surprised. And coming in that close during training, it's a bubble violation. So it's either a thousand feet or 500 feet. You can't go within and that just helps prevent midair collisions. So most likely wouldn't have happened in training. Couple things there, so I love the P-51. I love the heritage behind it. I love that they have the heritage in there to kind of balance out the new and the old. And then you've got the pilots in a bar celebrating. You know, I think that that still kind of happens, but really it's all about, you know, camaraderie and bringing people together. And I think in fighter squadrons, when you do that, you get a lot of excitement, but then you get like, potentially you know fights uh, a lot of type a personalities coming together i know some of my best friends started out as kind of competitive rivals and then eventually you realize that you're just making each other better with that competition and you start to become friends but there's definitely some tensions especially when you get all these type a personalities together Okay, right there, uh, it showed two jets with kind of, uh, they're kind of facing each other like this and they're rolling. It's called a rolling scissors. And that's actually a real thing that can happen uh, when you can't get a, no a position on the other aircraft. And so you just kind of start spinning around trying to get behind that aircraft to shoot them down. And so that's called a scissors. And essentially it happens, but it's a little further apart. My assumption would be that you'd have at least 2,000-ish feet in between the jets as you're doing that rolling scissors, trying to get position on them. That one was really close. That was probably like 50 feet, uh, but it highlights the fact that you can actually have that happen and they're trying to represent the scissors there. All right, missing man formation. Unfortunately, that does happen. And, uh, you know, ultimately it's a, it's a very dangerous job flying fighter jets. So everybody out there who's been a fighter pilot has probably known somebody who's passed away. So the fact that they tie it in there as a remembrance and an honor to that fighter pilot, I think is really cool. And missing man formation is one of the most iconic ways to just celebrate someone's life, celebrate their passion for aviation and hopefully inspire their comrades to just continue onward and continue to fight the good fight. So really cool to see that. And then Maverick lays on the G's there. You know, I think when you lay on G's, yeah, you know, your eyes definitely kind of scrunch in and come down. And I love that they had a clear visor on him because you can kind of see the G's kind of set on and his face gets kind of pulled down a little bit. And that's definitely true. You know, when you're pulling these G-forces, your whole body is just be getting essentially pulled down into that seat and then you're squeezing all the muscles in your body so from your calves all the way up to your abs and essentially you're just keeping the blood in your brain so you can continue to operate that fighter jet so a good representation of that there you got to have the volleyball scene you know all fighter pilots play volleyball you know it's essentially you fly jets and you play volleyball it's what you do <laughs> Okay, so that was a heat sticking missile coming at that jet. And yeah, break right isn't actually a call that you would make to your wingman if they didn't see the missile being shot at them. And you would probably say break right flare or break left flare. And that's gonna shoot out that flare, which hopefully the heat seeking missile uh, hits. Now, the key to that is don't be an afterburner because if you're an afterburner, then that heat seeking missile is gonna disregard the flare because your afterburner is a stronger source of heat and it's gonna go after that. But that's pretty realistic in that scenario, shooting out a whole bunch of flares to try to save your life uh, and then hopefully get back to a position to shoot down the bad guy. So I think it's super cool that they put that SpaceX spaceship in there and the fact that Maverick's flying it. I think it just highlights the fact that no matter how old you get, you're gonna love aviation until the day you die. So the fact that Maverick's out there being a test pilot for you know this next SpaceX space shuttle is definitely representative of that desire of a fighter pilot to stay in the action keep doing the thing that you do best, which is flying jets or you know flying some sort of aeronautical something. So it's cool that they had that in there. Ultimately, hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown and thanks so much for watching the video. If you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and boom, dominate that like button for me. It'll help us get Top Gun in the lives of more people. And every time you hit that like button, you save the life of a fighter pilot. <laughs> thanks so much for watching guys. See you on the next video.